You can change the shape of the room. The default room is rectangular, but the data center can be made almost any shape by adding walls, which would be done by selecting a wall and inserting new walls. In this example, we'll return to the rectangular room. We'll begin by changing the ceiling height. If we select the entire room, the details of the room outline will appear in the property sheet. We can change the height according to our design requirements. The height then automatically changes in the graphical view. Next, we'll change the other dimensions of the room. When you're not tracing a CAD drawing, dimensional information can be added manually or changed by moving the blue toggles on each wall. Again, exact dimensions can be added into the property sheet. The raised floor height and floor grid size we will leave as the default. Like all the elements of the software, the defaults are sensible, giving you a base to start from if you don't have specific design details. We'll change the display option of the raised floor to make it look more realistic. For each item in its associated property tree under display, the look of the item in the graphical view can be edited. Colour can easily be changed. Next, you can change the render style of the item to solid, solid outlined or textured, where a picture is attached to an item to make it look lifelike. Now we're going to start adding some architectural features to the data center. Anything you can have structurally in a data center can be modeled, columns, beams and so on. When a new item is added, a dialog box pops up. This box contains item-specific geometry and location information. This function can be turned off if you prefer. In this data center, we'll have an entrance in one corner with steps and a ramp. We can add these by creating a cutout in the raised floor. New items can be added by selecting an item in the model tree and right-clicking, selecting New and then selecting the item you wish to add to the item. New items can also be selected from the icons on the right-hand side toolbar. The specifications of the cutout can be added into the pop-up dialog box. We can change the width and depth of the cutout and move it into the corner. Now we can add the ramp to the cutout we've just created. At this stage, it might be useful to bring the cutout and ramp into its own view. This can be done by double-clicking the required item, or selecting the item graphically or in the model tree and clicking New Graphical View. Now we can select the ramp and change its geometry and orientation. To return to the full view, click the Virtual Facility tab. We'll repeat the process of creating a cutout in order to add some steps. We'll move the cutout into location beside the ramp. In the dialog box, we'll leave the geometry of the steps as it is, but you could easily change the number of steps if necessary. We will, however, change the placement to make sure the steps face the same direction as the ramp. Both ramps and steps are automatically sized to the height of the raised floor. Next, we'll add safety barriers beside the stairs and ramp. You do this by adding a solid obstruction. Solid obstructions are a good way of modelling non-specific items in a data centre, as they can be made into a variety of shapes. Now we can use the toggles on the solid obstruction to create the correct shape. Each object in the room has three sets of toggles. Blue, which moves the object. Green, which changes its shape. And brown, which changes orientation. We can make sure the barrier is sized and placed correctly by editing its details in the property sheet.
For safety, there should also be a wall between the steps and ramp. We'll look from the right-hand side so we can see what we're doing more easily. We can use another solid obstruction and change its shape and orientation to fulfil our requirements. You can model a polygon as thick or thin. The outline function gives you complete control over the shape of your polygon. You can add as many points as you like and define precise coordinates for each. You can also specify orientation. We can set the display of the internal walls to transparent, so you see through them for demonstration purposes. Now that we have a ramp and stairs for entering the data centre, we need a door to enter through. To add a door to the wall, right-click the wall and add a new door. The geometry is easily changed to match your requirements. You can specify whether it's a set of double doors or a single door, which direction the door opens and whether the door is open or shut. As with all objects, you can make the door more lifelike by changing the display to textured and attaching a picture of a door. Within Six Sigma Room, you can add many different objects to create a more lifelike model. We shall place a desk in the bottom right-hand corner of the data centre. You can change the dimensions and move it wherever you'd like on the data centre raised floor. You can also add equipment on or below the desk and add shelves. You can change the width of the shelves and place them at any height above or below the desk. Let's add one more shelf above the last. To make the desk look more lifelike, you can select it and change the colour under display in the property sheet to a more suitable colour. The last architectural feature we're going to add to this data centre is lighting. As all the lights in this data centre are the same, we can first make one light and then copy it. The lights will be located on the ceiling, so you must first select ceiling to add a new light. You can change the geometry of the lights to match your requirements. Lights can either be fixed directly onto the ceiling or hanging from it in pendant style. Here we're going to create pendant lights which hang 30 centimetres from the ceiling. Next we add a power to the light. We shall have two bulbs, each emitting 100 watts. The heat emitted from this lighting power load will be included in the CFD simulation and the power used will be accounted for in the Six Sigma power module. Now that we've created one light, we can easily duplicate it to create all the lighting in the data centre. This is a good opportunity to use the pattern tool. In the pattern dialog box you input how many objects you require in each direction and the distance between them. In this case we'll space the lights by 3.1 metres in the X direction and 2.8 metres in the Z direction. We'll have 9 lights in the X direction and 5 in the Z direction. Close the dialog box and all the lights will appear. The room can have as much or as little detail as you require. You can add all the objects and information which will affect the data centre operation and you can also add aesthetic objects and textures to make the room more lifelike.